Houston Texans, we got the win. We own Texas. We went into Jerry World. We fucked them up. Um, you Texans fans traveled very well. Y'all basically took over that whole stadium. Um, 34 to 10. I didn't get it right, but some of y'all got it right. I was pretty much dead on, yeah. I think. But I think they were down by a field goal. That's pretty much how I figured that was going to go. If Turpin yeah, wouldn't have got his touchdown, I would be right. Yeah, I went back and listened to it, and we were pretty close. Yeah. I said, we did have a, a butt whooping. Um, I guess, of course, the biggest star of the game, Joe Mixon. Um, dude is just Mr. Automatic at this point. When you I told you he was going to have a good game, but I'm going to disagree. I think the star of the fucking game was Jalen Petrie. Ooh, Mr. Defense has the. I mean, other than the D line, they were fuck. I think he was causing problems that people, like the average person, don't realize. They were like, "Where the fuck is this dude at now? Where the fuck is this dude at now?" Like, I don't know. Peachy was balling me yesterday, but yeah, shout out to Mixon because he fucking he killed it. But I knew he was. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's a terrible defense. Um, he's our best player. Uh, when used right, the O line. Honestly, I mean, there was a few plays where they kind of well, Drew Scruggs messed up, the Larry Tunsil in the beginning, but all in all, the O line did pretty well. CJ made sure to give a shout out to him. He's like, honestly, if you relook at the film, he goes, they played well. They were dominated in the run game. Like they won that fight in the trenches. Like Michael Parsons, the run game was easy. Michael Parsons pretty much was non-existent. Er, was, See all my notes because some of us take them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had told you yesterday. I was like, "Damn, that was a really good first play, uh, like series play call by Slowick, right?" And then, uh, fucking, they were fucking him up. Like CJ, I think Micah had a pressure, and Demar Overshawn had a sack, and somebody else had a sack. I was like, "Fuck, it's gonna be one of them days." But then they were just like, "Oh, they will run the ball." Cause y'all can't stop that, and then it's gonna get you off the quarterback. You know what I'm saying? So then it fucked up their defensive timing because they could no longer rush the quarterback with five like they were, just by dominating the run game. So I was like, okay, you just did two things that you didn't do last week: is you fucking made an in-game adjustment, and you were dominated in what you try to do. So that's that was a dub to me. Um, D'Amico was on your side. He said the star of the game was Petrie. Um, he said pretty much what you said. I'm not mad at that hit at all. I will take that hit every day. Um, his motor is something that you can't stop. He gave praise to Stingley. Um, Stingley in the last four games, the amount of receivers he's gone up against and pretty much not quote unquote lockdown. We, we, fully, left, he, we left five picks on that field. Yeah. Stingley should have had four, and Bullock did should have had two, and he had none. And one of them was going to be a pick six. We left fucking picks on the. You know how bad that game would have been if we would have had that many picks against the Cowboys. It actually would have been real boring to watch, to be honest with you. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking that whenever they were all, everything that they almost picked yesterday, I was like, I'm actually kind of glad they didn't because this would have been boring. I don't shit. have a. I was very pleased with how good the whole defense played. Like, Devin White and Toa Toa balled yesterday, bro. They were like, oh, these motherfuckers is worried about Petrie, but we're going to go make the tackle while Petrie does everything else. It was so good to watch. Like, it, it was like on a fucking string, bro. Like, I go here, and then you have to go there. And it was just like pulling, like rotational. And I was like, it's beautiful shit to me. I mean, granted, that offense is atrocious over there, but not my this problem. Is, yeah, but this is also with a defense that is trying to get healthy. Noah Anderson, uh, Bullock, of course, out, uh, or Kamari Fatu Laster Fatu. out. Yeah, Fatu Saki out. Like, I mean, Stingley in his last four games, 20 targets, five catches allowed, 41 yards allowed, one interception, zero touchdowns, 18.75 passer rating allowed. Like, this, there's now, of course, the way that he's playing compared to the sauce is playing. It, it, there's a lot of people flip-flopping especially with all these primetime games and him putting on a show of like, hey, don't even – you're not even throwing over there. 
Like the thing about it is, is we see that like there was a play yesterday where mm-hmm. they motioned CD Lamb into the slot. He ran the underneath uh, route across the fucking field, got separation, caught it at like three. But by the time he got to five, Stingley just tackled him. And I was like, oh, sweet, great open field tackle because he might have went for 15. The point is, is shit like that gets overlooked because see, you have to understand Stingley will never, ever, ever get the recognition he deserves. And it's our coach's fault because they don't send him with the best. They're like, no, stay on your side. If he goes to your side, he's yours. If not, he's not. Opposed to like Sauce, who's going to travel. That's what gets you clout. And because they don't require Stingley to do that, people don't realize how fucking good that dude is, bro. He played that ball in the air yesterday like a receiver. Yeah. Um, CJ Stroud, he's been quote unquote, a lot of people say he's in a sophomore slump. No. Um, but if you look at the numbers as of today, he's top five in passing yards. He's 2,628. He's only behind Geno Smith, Kirk Cousins, Lamar Jackson, and Joe Burrow. So, I mean, <laughs> I liken myself to be a diehard Texan fan. Like, I haven't missed a snap. I just don't. And I can tell you what. CJ is not in a slump. CJ is in his head. CJ is uneasy. Like, CJ is worried about everything except the shit he's doing at the moment. That's the fucking problem. So fucking figure it out. I think he needs a hobby. Yeah, he need to go play golf or something. Nah, he CJ's an athlete. He needs to do something where he's doing something, not sitting there thinking. He needs to go get, like, on the bench like go lift some weights or something like for real for real go fucking work on a car go do something fuck but just take your mind off of that and trust that the shit you did is gonna pay the fuck off but he's sitting there thinking about it and i know that's the case because that ball he threw to the fucking safety yesterday that pick that he thought nico collins was gonna stop on i was like that's just you overthinking that's your timing off just chill the fuck out there was people talking shit about him yesterday during the game uh, after he threw the interception. It was right after Cooper Rush threw that touchdown that barely really had anything to do with him. His receivers just broke free. Uh, he fucking threw that touchdown, and people were like, Cooper Rush is playing better than CJ. And Cooper Rush had like 10 yards less than CJ already. They both had an interception. It was just he threw a touchdown. <clears throat> it, yeah, a lot of people were like com- trying to compare the two. There was people at the end of the game they are like, don't let it fool you. Cooper Rush played better than CJ. And I was like, if he would have played better than CJ, they would have won the game. If Number CJ two has pick, a run game, but... Number two quarterback on your team. Yeah, it's not compared. Yeah. Like, I was like, team. y'all are reaching very hard. Now, can CJ play better? Of course. Yeah. Now, the thing yeah. is, though, like Zach said while we were watching it, you have a running back. You have yeah. a dominant running back. You're going to feed the ball. Look at – Every team that has a dominant running back, they feed their running back the ball. The system in itself requires a dominant running game. Like, just look at San Francisco, how much they run the ball. And then, two, you can't compare what he did last year to what he did this year because he had to do it last year because you had absolutely no help in the run game. You know what I'm saying? So you get the help, and, of course, somebody has to be affected by that, and it's probably going to be the person getting pass yards. You're what seven and four man i was man i really wanted to fuck them up more yesterday because of how bad their team is <clears throat> but i'll take it and i'm gonna tell you who else balled the fuck out and i haven't heard nobody show him love is john motherfucking mechie you ain't getting no bullshit ass fake punt on me because i'll light your ass up mechie was balling yesterday you were like, maybe he need to be on defense, bro. Yeah, I was like, maybe Mitch is a safety. <laughs> Shit, tackling like that. But, dude, he had four or five catches. You know what I'm saying? And that's coming off the week before we had a dominant drive and a touchdown. He's trending in the right direction. I told y'all. He didn't He didn't have the game I thought he was going to have, but he, he helped. He was, the best, he was the second best receiver on the field yesterday. Yeah. He, he and I was- only give Nico Collins more credit yesterday because he opened a lot of shit up, I think. Yeah, Nico Collins missed – well, not his fault, but Terrence will get in that play. That that was a – it was one of those, like, damn it. But then you saw how the offense was rolling. You're like, oh. Um, there's a lot of a lot of fans that are – they went to bed happy, I would say. I mean, if you're a Texans fan, you're upset. 
you're seven and four, you're running the AFC South. You got yeah. stuff to clean up, but you're going to get healthy. Um, I mean, you're about to have quote unquote, I don't want to say easy games, but two very beatable division games against two teams that are trending in the very wrong direction, like the Cowboys before your bye. So, um, I mean, you could easily be nine and four heading into your bye. Yes, which would be amazing. Amazing. Uh, I don't know. I've seen what I wanted to see. I mean, the only thing I'd rather have seen was CJ play better. It's like, fuck, when you're running the ball like that, what can you say? Yeah. It's, I mean, Nico's game, first game back, testing his hammy. Um, Mitchie looks like he's fine his stuff. Tank looks like he's fine his stuff. I wish tight ends play better. I'll give Stover credit. He, I told him to play a fullback, and they used Stover at fullback, and he helped get the ball in the end zone. They met me halfway on my demand. Stover was over there catching yesterday, and I was like, "Oh, I bet Zach's happy right now." <laughs> Not really. He was like, "That's well, my I mean, favorite player." He did now. better than he fucking did last week. Exactly. I don't give a fuck if he ever catches a ball, but you just can't get beat up on blocking like that. Zach was having so much fun walking him and uh, Jimmy Ward. It was like, yeah, yeah. I ain't even go. Hey, Jimmy Ward had that good shoulder check on CD Lamb yesterday, and he just gave us a pick <laughs> off of it. It's like, bitch, yeah. you running into. Yeah, it was. I'm gonna take the win. I needed that after two losses. Um, mm-hmm. I also it, like that we were it, the whole day, the whole day, and I was like, the Dallas Cowboys fans are lucky, are lucky that Stefan Diggs ain't here. Not because we would fuck you up more, but I was like, all the game yesterday, we were right there at a fight. Like Shaq Mason got into it and somebody else got into it. And I was like, the one motherfucker on our team that would start some shit just because ain't here. And y'all lucky. Y'all lucky that the rest of these fools got enough sense to not feed into that bullshit. This fight between brothers, hell yeah. It was funny too because I was expecting to wake up to a lot of Texans versus Cowboys fights. I woke up to a lot of Cowboys versus Cowboys fights. Like they were fighting each other because of how bad their team is doing. But that's the funny thing is the Cowboys fans who really know football know their team is fucking bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's the dumb motherfuckers who don't know football that still have ex- expectation that yeah, that we, are start shit. We, we had a video fucking Toro was out there asking people who was going to win the game. And all the Cowboys fans he asked were like, oh, we suck. The Texans are going to win. I know a lot of them that are very. They're like, "All right, draft pick, let's go." Um, that I didn't. I didn't talk shit. I really didn't even talk shit to most of my cowboy fans, friends, and family because it's like, eh, it, there's no point. Y'all, y'all are already having to deal with a shitty season anyway, so that's kind of hilarious. Um, but two, it's like I know that we didn't play like amazing, so no, we didn't play dominant. And so if we would have dominated, then I would have been like, okay, yeah, good. But there's a lot of Texans fans. Y'all slow the fucking breaks down, all right? Like, I'm tired of – we win a game and y'all like, we're back. We beat them. We're, we're do- No, this team sucked. You're supposed to beat this team. Yes. You can act like that when we go in that gauntlet of the Ravens and Kansas City and we beat those teams back-to-back. Then you can be like, oh, shit. Like, I'll say this, though. Because I'm with you. Like, I never count my fucking chickens until that bitch is frying in the pan. Uh, but if you could play defense like that or run the ball like that, you're going to win a lot of fucking football games. We still get Christian Harris back at, after bye. Will Anderson back after bye. Kamari Lasseter. Uh, fucking Mario Edwards. Well, he was there yesterday, but he was a... Uh... Who's out for steroids? No, he came back. He got a. Uh, he came back yesterday. Oh, did he? Yeah, I didn't see shit. Yeah, I don't I think seen Tim, I seen Tim Settle motherfucking scorch Cooper Rush yesterday. That was the most hilarious <laughs> thing I ever seen. I was like, how the fuck did you not see him coming? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big dude coming at you. Oh, uh, funny. He just laid out on like a fat woman falling on you in a movie or something. <laughs> All right. Texans, Cowboys, I got anything else? Nope. Mission accomplished. Show up, show out. Could we run Texas? 
We have bragging rights until we play them again in a regular season. Is it even season. in question, though, to be honest? No, not at all, but it, it's it's not. That team looks atrocious over there um, from their building falling apart to their ownership to their team to everything. So I was like, eh. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Texans, we got two games coming up before bye. Holidays coming up, so be on the lookout. Thank you, Scott Van Pelt, for shitting on Jerry Jones pregame yesterday. I thought that was hilarious. Oh, yeah. As Texans fans, it is our job to make sure that Cowboys fans know how shitty their team is until week 18. So keep it up. We will. Huzzah! Win. Other than that, Texans fan, enjoy this one. It was fun, but now it's on to the other team that I hate, which is the Tennessee Titans. <sighs> You want to be Oilers. Um, we'll be moving on. Look out for that video on YouTube. Other than that, drop your comments, thoughts down below. We are out of here. Peace.